welcome to another Quick Tips. Today, this is Guitar Tips for Boomers. So welcome, fellow Boomers. Um, are you beginning again, or are you a mature person who's just starting to play guitar or starting over? Um, is your story a lot like mine, where you had a guitar as a kid, and for whatever reason, you put it down because life gets in the way and you never pick it up again? I didn't play guitar for like 25 years. And I'll tell you, it is not like riding a bike. Uh, you don't just get back on it and get going. It takes a while to get going again. So I'd like to give you some tips today on what's helped me uh, to the point where I can play. Um, so first, my first tip is the equipment. Get yourself the good stuff. Um, there's probably somebody in your group of friends that can help you pick out a guitar. Uh, I recommend that you maybe maybe go to a mom and pop type guitar store where you might get a little more attention and somebody helping you pick out a guitar. There's nothing wrong with big box stores, but in the beginning, before if you don't know what you're looking for, you might want to go where you can get some more attention. Um, you don't have to spend $5,000 on a guitar but you probably have to spend more than $500. I've played guitars from a value of $100 to $30,000 and all points in between. And I know that the price doesn't necessarily uh, make it sound any better. Um, you know, a couple of thousand dollar guitar can sound as good as a $10,000 guitar. Um, so you just gotta find the right combination, something that's affordable for you but has all the right stuff. Uh, and you, you also want to get that guitar set up by a pro. I highly recommend that. They set the action. And in the beginning, you might try a little bit lighter strings. They'll probably try to talk you out of it, but you might need some uh, lighter strings. If you've got some arthritis in your hands, you may even think about getting a nylon string guitar uh, if, that's your, if, if you have hand issues. Um, so, you, again, you don't have to spend a fortune, but you probably want something a little better. And then I recommend it, that you keep your guitar where you can see it. Buy all the stuff you need, get tuners, capos, guitar stands, humidifiers, um, and you want to keep it out where you can see it because it's, a guitar is nice and safe in its case under the bed, but unfortunately, we don't get it out and play it enough. So you got to keep it where you can see it and pick it up and play it, but keep it humidified. Um, my next tip is to start back at the beginning. Um, so you, you need a little bit of theory and you probably want to learn the notes on the fretboard. I know a lot of people say you don't need to do that, but I believe if you do do that, you will... Uh, get going much, much faster and it'll be much easier for you to understand things if you spend a little time on the basics. Um, so I highly recommend a little bit of theory and learning that fretboard. Um, you, you get a bit, and then the other thing is you get a better chance of not forming bad habits if you do that, if you go back to the beginning. Um, the next tip I have for you is to listen to music and play along with music or a metronome, preferably music, it's a lot more fun, uh, so that you can train your ear. You wanna listen to the beat. The drummer's very important. The bass player is very important that you wanna listen to and get the feel for the music. Uh, my fourth tip today is to find somebody to play with, um, even if it's not your genre. For instance, I, I like blues and rock and roll, but I found a really good group of bluegrass guys that, and they, they get together at least twice a month. And I have learned so much from hanging out with those guys and playing with a lot of other instruments, not just guitars, you know, banjos, fiddles, uh, mandolins. You learn a lot and you get your timing down and your dynamics, when to be loud, when to be quiet. It's so important to play with people, so I highly recommend you do that. Um, number five um, is take 15 minutes a day and break it down into three five-minute increments. 
and write down what you're going to do. Like you might be working on a new chord, you might be working on a scale, and you might be working on a song. Just give them five minutes a piece. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give them five minutes a piece. Put a timer on it, and you will be amazed if you do that every day. Um, and then change your list of things, obviously, that you're learning. And do that before you start noodling around. Noodling is good, and it's fun, and you can actually get a lot of skills from just noodling around, playing scales and stuff like that. But uh, get a little more systematic to it. And I think if you get five minutes, three, to, you know, three five-minute things on a 15-minute schedule, um, you'll be much better off than saying you're going to play an hour a day or something ain't gonna happen. You might play five hours a day, but at least you'll be organized. Um, then my next tip would be to find a good teacher. Um, there's a lot of them out there. You know, you can take personal lessons, you can do YouTube, but stay focused on one thing. And I'm talking to myself here too, because uh, I'll be focused on something on YouTube and I see something over here and I'll go, oh, a squirrel, and I'll start working on something else. Try not to do that. Try to stick with a good teacher and uh, go through it. And then um, don't get discouraged. This is gonna take a little bit of time. Um, and you have to set some reasonable goals for yourself. You're not gonna learn, um, you know, as you're starting to learn back again, you're not gonna learn classical gas or all the lead parts to Sultans of Swing or something. You know, set your goal a little lower at the beginning. Just let's learn some some little three chord, four chord songs and enjoy yourself before, uh, and learn the basics again before you start getting into the real heavy, heavy stuff and get discouraged. And remember that there's only 12 notes in music. So if you learn something, chances are you can move whatever that is you just learned and you'll find out that you're learning a lot more than you think you are. So it's actually progressing faster than you think. Um, I, and I have a shameless plug here. To, I have some classes on my YouTube channel for you. If you're a brand new beginner, I have a class on there called Rookie of the Year. It's like f a few five minute videos that take you from tuning a guitar to playing the basic cowboy chords. Uh, so that's a good one. If you're Even if you're just getting started again, you might want to take that as a refresher course. And then I have systematically... Uh, they're called breakout sessions. The first one is about theory, and it's not a lot of theory, but it's it's the basic theories that you need. Then the next one is like learning bar chords, and then we, I call the next one little chords. That's like triads, and all the way up. So there's it gets to some uh, intermediate or maybe even advanced classes, and they're free. All you got to do is subscribe to my channel for that. So um, so hopefully you can also find a mentor. Um, I've been very lucky. I found a group called Guitar League. They're a fantastic bunch of guys and ladies who get together and play and share. Their motto is uh, learn, play, share. And that's what we do all the time. So hopefully you can find something like that. They're a national group. I'll put their website up here and maybe they have a chapter near you. So if you have any more questions, um, I'm the guy because I've been there. Like I said, I didn't play for 25 years. I had to start all over again. I've got arthritis in my hands, so I can answer a lot of questions for you. So just go ahead and subscribe and ask me some questions, and I'll see you in the next video.